College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, my sister's been asking, is it safe to eat anything? And I didn't know what to say because the answer is no. But I did find something here. This is the one edible cardboard that is apparently not containing listeria. So you can always eat those flowers, Janet. Anyway, it was bad enough that, you know, uh, we no longer have boar's head liverwurst, but now we don't have McDonald's quarter pounders. Apparently 49 cases of E. coli have broken out. I think the last one was Jack in the Box, the last big E. coli outbreak. Uh, but there are 49 cases in 10 states so far. If you're in Colorado and Nebraska, McDonald's apparently are higher risk. Uh, there have been 10 hospitalizations and one death. Uh, but when you think about it, with E. coli, a lot of times people just get a sick GI disorder. They don't get really that severely ill. And my guess is many, many, many people who don't feel well after a quarter pounder have been infected with E. coli. But that's not enough. Now, frozen waffles have listeria in them. And the, the Treehouse brand has recalled more than 600 varieties of frozen waffles, Belgian waffles, pancakes. They're in Walmart, Target, Trader's jo Trader Joe, and even blueberry pancakes now. Now, I have not been a big fan of frozen waffles. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's not that hard to make a waffle, so. Anyway, don't get any more frozen waffles. So what else is happening? As if that's not enough. Uh, I always like to start off with our data from TEFI, the Texas Epidemic uh, Public Health Institute. It's actually, I think, the most forward thinking about how to look at emerging pathogens. And this is like all the different data from wastewater, 80% coverage of Texas. A lot of people have had colds lately, but they're, they're COVID negative, at least ones here. Uh, people who come back from Europe with colds you have been usually COVID. But in the United States, enterovirus 68 is the main one. SARS still is not very high. No, no influenza A yet, although you know it's coming, and parvo 19 is down. So right now the main thing that gives you a cold this season is enterovirus. Um, okay, what about, what about bird flu? Now this is, one of, this is my favorite thing. So four egg farm workers uh, from Washington State have now turned out positive. So the number is up to 31 of the 5,100 people that are being monitored. Uh, and they've been monitoring a lot. So they've had 260 tests, 31 positives. Uh, and if you look at who has been, who, where the exposures are, a uh, lot in the cattle industry, the dairy cattle industry in California, and the us and poultry industry in Colorado and now in Washington, and if you look at this total surveillance of animals, there have been 10,420 wild birds that have been positive, but 103 million poultry and now 323 dairy cattle. And so there was a <laughs> this is my favorite thing. I mean, even I I have to laugh at this. This is the CDC put out a little diagram on how people who are backyard, you know, have chickens in their backyard, how you might get infected by backyard poultry. So there's a wonderful picture here of a guy holding a chicken. And it looks like, and I, I kid you not, it looks like he has picked up some chicken guano and put it to his nose and mouth. And you wonder how you get what. I think it's simpler than that. I don't think you have to go act, actually go eat the droppings from a chicken. But they show that, you know, bird flapping and all that kind of stuff. If you hold them tight, you might be exposed. And then the CDC says, well, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's of low risk to everyone in the United States. But if you happen to be around dairy cattle or chickens, here's what you're supposed to wear. It's like you've landed on Mars. You know, it's like unbelievable. It's like a haz hazmat suit. So I don't know. It's kind of a mixed message. I, I personally think that it's getting to the point where there's so many cattle and chickens that are infected in this country that, you know, we probably ought to be trying to do more than just stockpiling vaccines. As I said, I think we should be vaccin vaccinating at least cattle uh, and being prepared I personally would I think it's probably wise to vaccinate workers who are exposed to poultry and, and cattle. So anyway, that's not it. That's not the end of it, Janet. <laughs> I, I know you, she usually watches Saturday morning, not Friday. And 
you know, it's calm over her coffee until, of course, I start scaring her with stuff. But Marburg's still around. You remember the hemorrhagic virus that was named after Marburg, Germany because uh, of some scientists who were working on, on uh, some specimens there. Uh, it's mostly now in sub-Saharan Africa. You can see there are a fair number of cases. Uh, one case in Serbia and a couple cases in Germany, all people returning from that area of Africa. So it's still confined to Africa, but it's a, a, on the World Health Organization uh, out, uh, concern. <laughs> Orapuchi, remember we talked about Orapuchi virus, which has uh, been generally in the Amazon basin, but is now moving up to the Americas, actually was a lot of, of cases in Cuba. There are now 90 cases that have been identified. Five uh, have been reported in the States. Almost all have been traveling from Cuba. It's a Zika-like virus. Uh, and the concern, of course, is there have been several deaths associated with it. And also, uh, infection during pregnancy provides, uh, induces a lot of complications. RSV, we talked about, is pretty much not around these days, so that's good. What's happening with influenza A and, and B? So the influenza season's coming up. You know, we used to have to wait until like now and when people show up in with um, pneumonia or complications in a hospital, we would test them for flu. That's how we found flu season. Now we can look in wastewater, still not around. It's going to be here. I, I promise you it's going to be here, so get your flu shots now. Uh, this is the time uh, to do it. So what about SARS? You know, we had a big outbreak in the late summer and early fall. I thought we would peak about like we did last year, but we didn't. It's come down. It's, it's very little in the U.S. But people arriving from Europe and other folks still have a fair amount of SARS. So you can see this is in wastewater. Uh, in the United States, uh, the number of cases in emergency rooms is falling, and the hospitalizations is also falling. So that, this is all very good. Uh, good news. If you look at what the dominant strain is, it's not really, it, is, it hasn't changed much since last week, but it is changing. XEC, that recombinant that I talked about before uh, that came from Germany and uh, Denmark, is, is expanding. It's now up to 10 percent of the, of the variants. Uh, KP3, which is uh, the dominant one, is 57 percent of the variants. You remember last week I talked about the, what's coming in from um, Europe and, and other countries. EG5 appeared. This is last week's, but when I, I said I didn't understand that, well, this week EG5 is gone. So probably was one location that had it. But right now it's still a little bit lagging behind. There's still JN1, which was the dominant strain last year in the U.S. Is there still some in, coming in from uh, other countries? KP3 and XEC are the dominant strains, just like they are in the, in the U.S. So, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting season right now. Um, it looks like most of the upper respiratory infections are enterovirus. SARS is really kind of low. There's not a lot of risk right now. We're waiting for influenza season. Uh, but other than that, I think we're in a pretty good, pretty good situation right now. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout-outs. And the first is... Uh, to our faculty that were elected to the National Academy of Medicine. So Dr. Uh, Maria Elena Botazzi, Senior Associate Dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine and Co-Director of Texas Children's Hospital Center for Vaccine Development, uh, was elected, as was Dr. Teresa Davis, Professor of Pediatrics, uh, both elected to the Academy. Uh, this is really one of the highest honors in the fields of healthcare and medicine and recognizes individuals who have demonstrated outstanding professional achievements and commitment to science. So congratulations to both of them. Then a uh, big shout out to our School of Medicine students in Temple, Texas, who are helping their community. They're part of the BCM Temple chapter of Lone Star Survival Texas Tourniquet Training <laughs> in collaboration with the Texas College of Emergency Physicians. The students help with training in Temple High School career and technical education on the basic bleeding control methods in Texas, we need that. Uh, with the Temple High School students, the group focuses on controlling bleeding from injuries that occur in technical and vocational settings. And I want to congratulate Dr. Morvin Edwards, an Emeritus Professor of Pediatrics, who received the 2024 Walter E. Stam Mentor Award from Infectious Diseases Society of America, recognizes individuals who are exceptional mentors, uh, and she has mentored many learners who've gone on to become faculty and leaders in academic medicine. Uh, this week, I'm very happy to announce that we received a $10 million 
uh, proposed funding from the NIH Brain Initiative to study the effects uh, of, of treatments for depressive, um, the depressive phase of bipolar diso disorders. This is a, a, a grant that looks over the next five years to uh, funds a collaborative team of investigators from both Baylor and the University of Washington. Uh, and it treats uh, those with bipolar disorders who have not responded to available therapies. The research is being led by Dr. Wayne Goodman, who's the professor and chair of psychiatry, Samir Sheff, professor and vice chair of research in neurosurgery, Nicole Provenza, assistant professor of neurosurgery, and Dr. Jeffrey Heron, who's an assistant professor of neurosurgery at the University of Washington. And this is really cool. It looks at deep brain stimulation for depressive disorders. And finally, of course, this next week is Halloween. Lots of kids will be out trick-or-treating. Lily has been spending most of this fall trying to figure out what she's going to wear. Uh, but most of all, she's looking to getting a lot of treats for herself because that's the way she is. Anyway, uh, everyone be safe during this Halloween season. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend, wonderful Halloween, and I can't wait to see you. Hello, Lily. Happy Halloween. Would you like a treat? This is not a trick, I promise. <laughs> Beware of evil vampires. Look at you, little unicorn. Happy Halloween. You want some candy? Well, too bad for you, little unicorn. I don't have any candy. I only have tricks. Happy Halloween. <laughs> I thought we were going into match set. <laughs>